Salut everyone! In this video, we'll be talking about HomeLab. And what a better place to talk about HomeLab in my own basement with this baby here. Look at this. Yes, this is my home lab. My poor man home lab. But this video is going to be the first series of a huge amount of video in which we talk about Linux and home lab, self hosting, AI, etc., etc. And I wanted to start this series by showing you my actual hardware and how we're going to upgrade it, uh, update it, kind of. I know right now, like the price of RAM are pretty insane, but we're going to try to do that, okay? So, are you ready? Let's get into it. As always, we're going to start with a little bit of context. And as you certainly understand, I'm in the basement because I wanted to kind of like give you a little tour of my um, home lab here. And, you know, for some of you guys, it's going to be like, what the heck is going on in Air Max <laughs> basement? And some of them are going to be like, bro, what is this cable management? Like, why, why is this freaking like server is just on a piece of wood and on a, some type of like box, like toy box near the freaking fridge, right? And uh, yes, if you hear a sound, it's also because uh, right here, there is over like tools uh, running as we speak. So I, I just hope you're gonna be having like a good like sound when I'm trying to uh, introduce you to what I've done here and what I'm planning to do. And, and, and also like why I'm starting this uh, video series on my channel. All the hardware you have here, has been like barred for over like the last decade. Like to be super clear, more like uh, 12, like 14 years ago, I started it here when I arrived in Canada. And uh, my first way of like doing home lab, because everybody can do home lab, is just to get one of your used computer and transform it into a home lab server, aka Linux server, aka like, uh, NAS server, like everybody is giving a uh, different name, but the idea is like you get one of your own PC and uh, you put it in a place where you know nobody cares. You you know like sound won't be an issue, it won't be an issue. You just plug it to your own network, and boom, the magic starts. And to be clear, like this is how I started my journey when I was I think like 13 or 15 years old. I had the old PC and I put it in the other side of the room and I started to install Linux with it and do a lot of like funny stuff, okay? Like learning about networking, learning about like script, about like, you know, like the basic things to run your own server at your place. And I would say on the long run, start to host application service with your own hardware. So you see all those cables, those are the cables I run through the whole house. I did them myself. I did the finish, I did everything. It run through the EDIC, and they are all connected to some type of plug within the house for each room. And they arrive all here to my switch. So I'm gonna give you a, a little tour. You don't need all this hardware really. I'm gonna tell you after like what you really need. But the idea is that uh, internet come from here, from this fiber cable here, goes down there and arrive to this box. So you can see it's a bell box. This is a Canadian provider here, which which is super solid, by the way. You will see, like, we're going to transform it. We're going to remove it because I don't like uh, the box itself. And we're going to totally bypass it. I'm going to make a full video on that if you're interested. Uh, because what I'm going to share for this tutorial is going to be applicable to other uh, providers all around the world. But the idea is like you can totally bypass this box and continue to have internet on your own term. Then the internet arrive here in my Edge Router 4, which is a, a one gigabyte up and down router uh, from Ubiquiti. This is a line without all the, you know, like nice uh, UI and everything. Uh, it's more like uh, CLI oriented, like CLI oriented. It's a little bit more geeky, but we're going to replace that in the future. I'm going to make a video about that. And then uh, it come out from here, zoop, and go directly 
into this little stack of switch. So the one you see here, uh, let me show you the name here, is a Cloud Router Switch CRS312-4C8XG um, from Microtik. And both of them are from Microtik, actually. And really what it is, it's a 12-port, 10 gigabyte switch. So all those ports, RG45, they are running at 10 gigabytes. And here you can switch between uh, those SFP plus port and those one, right? You can, you have to switch, you can have both. So a total 12 port. And at the top here, you have the uh, 24 switch. <laughs> I don't wanna, I don't wanna, you can read it here, but I, I, I don't wanna, you know, uh, see the name again, it's, it's pretty hard. But the idea is like this one is a 24 port, one gigabyte switch. And this one, what it will do, uh, it's more for uh, some of the rooms that doesn't uh, require like 10 gigabytes. You don't need 10 gigabytes everywhere because you need to have like 10 gigabyte hardware on the other hand. Uh, that will be like some of the entry here. So you can see like most of them are not even finished. Like I pulled the cable out, but I didn't plug all of them. So I still have some room to add more and more. Uh, both of the switch are totally like manageable uh, through a web interface. Uh, if you want to know more about them, if you're interested in buying one, just let me know, like I'm going to make a specific video about them. But the idea is like, this is for high speed, this is for one gigabyte. And here we have a third switch, which is called like a tough switch PoE from Ubiquiti. So this one is really, really old. Like it has been running for like full, like 10 years at least. And uh, this one is really nice because all of those ports are one gigabyte, but they are providing power. So it's called PoE. You can provide power through each of those ports. And really, it's, it's really cool because right now this switch is powering this full 24 port switch via this cable, which is pretty awesome. So if you look behind, you will see like there is no AC plugged on it. It's just, the power comes from this, which is pretty nice. It makes your, you know, like cable management a little bit better. So yeah, I know, like talking about cable management, it's a little bit messy, but <laughs> I got a plan for that, okay? Now let's talk about the hardware related to the NAS. So you can see here, I have really like three little servers. So first is this Zotac machine. So I don't know the reference exactly, but this is a really also like old machine, which will be like the equivalent of the mini PCs they are selling right now. And this one is really nice because it was really, really cheap. I paid it like 70 bucks at a time. And it was like, I don't know, like almost like six or seven years ago. And the idea is like, I kept some of my service. I'm going to explain why after, but I kept some of my service on this machine uh, because it doesn't require a lot of juice, which means like if I lose power, which arrive like quite often here in uh, North America, I have to say, if I lose power, this one will still be running the basic. So for example, right now I'm running a mail server on that. I'm running a DNS server on that, which means like if everything has to stop because there is no more juice, this one could be running for hours, right? Because it doesn't require a lot of energy. I can run it for a long, long time from this little UPS here. So I know, yeah, it's a mess. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? But there is an UPS, there. basic UPS. Uh, it starts to be a little bit small for what I'm doing. I'm going to have to upgrade it and we're going to do that together. But long story short, this UPS support all the machine. And in case uh, we are running out of electricity, well, guess what? Battery is going to start up and I'm going to still have internet and all my really important services are going to be available right here, especially the DNS server. This is what really counts. So here we have a random cable. Yeah, I know it's, it's, it's a little bit of a mess, but like, sorry about that. Uh, let me know in the comments if I kind of like trigger you with all this mess, but uh, this is super important. So this, I used it for years and I'm still using it. It's a little piece of hardware that let me do my backup physical backup on external hard drive. So I created scripts. I just put a hard drive here, launch a command, and it do all the backup I need, right? Sometimes it takes hours. Sometimes it takes like full days because I have a lot of 
data to backup. And then I take out the hard drive and I put it in a safe place, which means like I'll always back up everything because of this nice tool here, right? So uh, I'm also planning to make some video about backup strategy. Like that, you see the hardware, right? This is also like pretty cheap. I don't remember exactly how much it costs. Uh, I'm going to put a link in the description below. But here you can put like two hard drive or two SSD. You see those little holes? You just plug them like that, turn it on, and boom, you're good to go. So this is connected via USB to this NAS here. So this is a fractal uh, design uh, type of NAS. And I won't really explain what is inside right now. It's going to be for a future video when I do an upgrade, because uh, it's planned. I'm going to plan to do an upgrade. I, I bought this hardware like 10 years ago too. It has been running really nice for me. I use it for so, so many services. And I think it's about times that I share with you like what I do because you know it's a Linux channel at the end of the day and yeah I think you could be really really interested in this so this is my NAS right now it has a six by four terabyte hard drive and some other stuff we'll talk about it after but you know it's not huge it's not something crazy but it has been there, it's reliable, and it's doing the job. And now this one. So this one, guys, it's a beast. I just changed the uh, the box like like two weeks ago, and this is going to be my AI project. Okay, so it's going to be a teaser for the, the next video. But I just want to let you know that this is a monster. It's a monster. I would say like a poor man monster. Like it's not like what you're going to see in the other channel with like, 1 million subscribers and like, you know, 10, uh, 6,000 uh, RTX Pro card. Like, this is not what it is, but it's going to be a pretty decent machine to start to, I would say, like, play around, for not using uh, an, another term, but like, play around uh, with AI. Okay, and wait, I'm going to open this door because this thing is actually awesome. Um, how do I open this? Yeah, wait. Oh my gosh. Okay, it's here. Look at those fans. <laughs> oh boy! We're gonna have fun. So, uh, I did the builds uh, again like two or three weeks ago. I kind of like teased it during the stream. Uh, but yes, I'm gonna be talking a lot about AI in the uh, future months because I think it's pretty cool. So, yeah. And here we go. Oh, yes. And also, like this, this wonderful like rack. This is my rack. <laughs> this is my rack, dude. Uh, can you can you please give me a, a, a big uh, nut uh, for my rack? It's a pretty big rack, but yeah, we're gonna upgrade that. Uh, this is from IKEA, and uh, yeah, it did the job. But I think we're gonna have to move to the next level. So this was the little tour of my humble rack. Okay. And uh, we're going to have a lot of upgrades in the future. But really, like this video is kind of like the, the first relating to this type of content I'm going to bring to the channel. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Let me know in the comment below what you think, what you would like to see. I know I've been talking, for example, a lot about LAN cache, right? And this is where my LAN cache comes from, like from this little home lab. You don't need this. You can have way better hardware or you can have like way worse hardware. It's going to be fine. Uh, you're going to be able to follow like all the tutorial I'm going to make. But I just want you to, to share uh, what I got with you guys. Because I think, um, you know, some users, they might be a little bit scared. But when they see like what I'm running here, they're going to be like, whoa, Air Max is able to run stuff from this. I can do it too, right? With old hardware, you, you don't need all the fancy stuff, right? Um, another thing I want to mention, which is super important, everything you're going to see here is uh, from my pocket, right? I buy everything, there is no sponsor, so all my choices are related to what I believe is the best bang for my buck, right? Um, so we're going to get some upgrades, that's for sure. Uh, one of them being this, it's a Ubiquiti router. Uh, because I moved my connection from uh, 500 megabytes symmetrical to 3.6 gigabytes symmetrical. And the hardware you have just seen, like it's just not powerful enough to move everything around. 
So I got this router and it's going to be certainly like the, the next like tutorial related uh, to this little upgrade. Uh, but yes, there is a lot of things that are going to come and I, I want to thank all the supporters, right? I want to thank all the viewers. I want to thank all uh, the members of La Crème de la Crème Club who help the channel financially, right? Because I don't have sponsor and without you guys, I couldn't do that. So if you are interested in this type of content and you want to support the channel, please do. Uh, there is YouTube membership, there is Twitch membership, there is PayPal membership, and the one I like the most is Patreon membership. So you know what you have to do? Guys, thank you very much and see you in the next one. Bisou, bisou. Oh yeah, and just take a look at my wonderful like. <laughs> My freaking fridge, dude! My freezer! Anyways, take care, guys.